I just finished putting together an all new Ultimate Reloader bench system here on the 100 yard Ridgeline Ultimate Reloader shooting range. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Gavin Gee here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm up here at what's essentially a construction site. I've been building my micro cabin and inside there's a brand new Ultimate Reloader reloading bench. This is gonna be a complete game changer. I've got my shooting bench right over there and here we are. This is the micro cabin. Now don't worry, I'm gonna have another complete in-depth video about the building and construction of this complete off-grid living quarters reloading room and Ultimate Reloader corporate office. So here we are inside the Ultimate Reloader Ridgeline Micro Cabin, and this is it. This is the all new incarnation. I want to call this probably about a Mark IV rendition of the Ultimate Reloader bench system. I had the bench that I originally built in 2008, probably. That was in my basement, and then I moved here to the Ultimate Reloader Outpost. That bench was actually cut down and is still installed in my overflow reloading area. About two years ago, I prototyped steel T-Tracks like these, made in the USA, very heavy duty compared to the extruded aluminum T-Tracks that you'll find from various vendors online that are imported from China. I apologize, I know you all have been waiting for this modular system, the kit of components to be available for you to build your very own benches. I just picked that up as the part of this exercise here to reevaluate what it's gonna to take to bring that all American reloading bench kit to market. The big difference with this bench compared to previous benches that I've built is the fact that it does not have post legs that come down from the middle and the ends of the bench to support it. This is such a space constrained environment, 160 square feet, it's 10 feet wide and it's 16 feet long. It's got a hide a bed in the middle, it's got my sort of corporate office, if you will, a, a desk where I'm gonna do blogging and calls and all that stuff. I'm gonna be working out of here and I'm gonna use it as a guest lodge. So. I had to be very conscious about how the space felt and therefore I used 45 degree two by four supports that are bolted onto the wood frame and onto the wall, which is very, very solid. This is two by six construction. It's got R19 wall insulation. We've got R34 in the floor with two by 12s. Very, very, very solid. So I had some good attachment points using the walls to attach to. So that is a quick overview of this particular table and how it came to be. What I want to do next is talk to you about the construction process. The first thing I needed to do when it came to putting together the plans for this bench was to decide what the dimensions were going to be. I wanted to have enough room to have a complete reloading setup set up on one side and to have enough room here to work on rifles, to mount and repair scope situations, and to do cleaning. Now with cleaning, I have to account for about four feet of rod and handle on the one side, and then I've got the complete barreled action I'm going through, and then enough room on the other side for the cleaning rod to exit and for the patches to get pulled off. So what I decided on was an eight foot bench. That's really what the sweet spot is here for this Ultimate Reloader bench systems. I've got some prototype tracks, two four footers in the back, and then I've got two foot sections here on the front. I do intend to do two foot sections because I've got a bolt head drop on the end of each one. So you have nice points in the middle here. It's easier to produce and it's easier to ship to you all. Again, working on that. So what I've got is 24 inches of depth and eight feet of length. And in terms of the construction, you don't need any real special tools, just basic carpentry type stuff. I went to my local lumber yard, I got a bunch of two by fours, I got a bunch of two by sixes, and I got a four by eight sheet of birch veneer sanded plywood that I applied polyurethane to. And the first step with the construction is to construct the outer frame. So I've got two 96 inch 
two by fours, and then we've got a total depth of 24 inches, so 21 inch two by fours for either end, and that all gets screwed together. I used exterior duct screws that were three and a half inches in length. And for this bench, I'm not getting overly precise. I really want to roll with the mountain top outdoors theme here and not be an overly perfectionist type person. So I didn't even use clamps. I didn't really do anything but eyeball stuff, screw it together. Then you cut down a full length two by four that's gonna serve as an attachment point for both the decking and these tracks. So the front track, the outward facing one, goes right into the two by six decking and down into the two by four. The rear one goes through the decking and down into that other full length member. So it's a 93 inch two by four and as opposed to the 96ers because we've got the thickness of both two by fours on either end. Then it's time to mount the frame to the wall. I've got one uh, transverse member here in the middle to kind of act as a stiffening point for the entire setup and to preserve the appropriate spacing with all of the two by fours uh, prior to the decking going down. And here I've got two by sixes. I've got one, two, three, four of those that go back. You could use wider boards, but two by sixes will exhibit less cupping, which is really important because they're the substrate for the top, which is three quarter inch plywood. These are three quarter by three quarter steel tubes that have been cut with slots, they're countersunk, and they've got these attachment points on the end. And the nice thing about that is when you lay the tracks down on your tabletop, you can pop three quarter inch plywood on either side and have a nice level surface. This is shown without the screw head covers. I've got wood strips that slide in and without the plugs that fill the slots. Once you've got those plugs in place, you've got a nice smooth surface. You're not going to have two, two, three cartridges falling down, not pens, not primers, nothing. You can use a brush to wipe all the debris off of your bench top onto the floor and then sweep it up, whatever you want to do. Okay, back to the construction process. After we get the two by sixes down, I ripped down a two inch strip of two by four in the back because that's how much I had left to take up the gap for that decking between the wall and the bench top. Then I ripped down, this is a seven and a quarter inch wide piece of plywood here, and that gives us the appropriate eight inch center to center spacing between the T-tracks on the outboard side and on the inboard side of the bench. So I screwed down this seven and a quarter inch wide piece of three quarter inch plywood, it's eight feet long, and I screwed it into place so that these front tracks would sit right where the radius of the two by four came to an end to the flat surface. It's in about an eighth of an inch, I would say, from the outside front face of that two by six that's laying sideways. And I've developed some special tools for attaching the tracks. You want these tracks to run perfectly straight. You want the spacing to be completely consistent. So I've created a drill guide that fits into the countersink in the T-track, and that's for the pre-drill. Once you get about a half inch of pre-drill, going down, then you can start your wood screws in and know that they're gonna stay centered and not follow wood grain and wander around, which is gonna cause a bow in your T-track or to cause it to be cockeyed, that kind of thing. So I have those clamped, I do the pre-drill, I do the screws, and then I finish screwing down this seven and a quarter inch piece. Then I cut the back piece, and that's gonna be whatever you have going back to your wall. And then sandwiched the back tracks between the two pieces of plywood and did my pre-drills, screwed the track down, then screwed down the back piece of plywood. Okay, and I chose to orient this bench so that I had it about three quarters of an inch above the windowsill and I cut down a piece of pine for back here. In fact, it was the windowsill I had in there before I built the bench and that gives me a nice level surface all the way back to the frame of the window. So one thing I didn't mention is when you mount it to the wall, it's great if you have something to screw into all the way on the backside and at least one of the sides, because that's gonna 
make sure that uh, everything is going to be really rigid. And in this case, I cut down two by fours with chamfers, so 45 degree cuts on either end that were parallel. And I've got that going up to the back side here of the front rim, and that goes back to the wall. I've got two three and a half inch screws going into the wall and two two and a half inch screws going into this rim. It turns out that it is very, very solid. And one of my concerns was, is this gonna be solid enough for a reloading bench? And if you look here, it's very solid. It's not, it's not going anywhere uh, due to the leverage of using the reloading press handle. So I would say, if I was to offer the kit and you were to do an eight foot bench build in your garage, once you've got everything level and plumb, you're just gonna go ahead and build out the the top and or the legs. I've also got a type of bench bracket for holding four by four posts in place securely. You know, it's going to be essentially a couple hour build and you're going to have a bench that's going to be completely modular. It's got steel T tracks. It's got the screw head covers and the plugs. This is a really awesome system. I've been using it now for 10 years and I don't feel like I could do without it. In this particular space, I'm going to be Finishing with the screw head covers and the plugs, and then I'm gonna optionally have a bench vise mounted over here, kind of depending on what it is that I'm working on any given day. Right now, I've got a place up on the bench to set the rifle. Uh, I can take the rifle and put it back in this corner here, which is gonna get it out of the way when I need more room to work on other projects. I've got the most beautiful view out this window that you can imagine. So. I can see myself up here off the grid for great lengths of time. And what's awesome is I'm about 60 feet away from my concrete shooting bench. So if I'm doing a ladder test, if I'm do, doing OCW testing, I'm going to have a lab scale here and I'm going to have all of my precise capabilities, but I don't have to go all the way up the mountain with my ammo to shoot it and all the way back down. It's a mile long Jeep road to go up and down. So now I'm ready to get down to business. That's my quick update on the reloading bench and I will have a full video covering the Odyssey that was building this micro cabin. This is so cool. I wish I could take you all up here and show it to you. Beautiful panoramic views, uh, total privacy. I've got a lot of gain that I can glass right here from the couch. This is absolutely living the dream. I want to thank you all for making this dream possible. Couldn't do it without you all. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would love to hear your input about this Ultimate Reloader bench system implementation, this particular incarnation of the system. Would you like to buy the kit? Please drop a comment. Let's discuss and make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the rest of the low development and shooting stories, hanging out at the micro cabin, building the micro cabin. This is absolutely amazing. Don't forget, links in the video description. I'll have a link to a more detailed article. I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'm on Patreon. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.